What is up, y'all? It's your boy, Renegade Enigma, Enigma here, coming to you with another video. In this video, I'm going to give you the Survivor Series 2014 results. First things first, we have the pre-show, which is Fandango versus the to-be-announced wrestler, which turned out to be Justin Gabriel. Fandango, who I'm going to call Fandango 2.0, has a pretty much new gimmick and whatever. Like, he's still a dancer or whatever. Before, he was a like ballroom dancer. Now, he's like, I don't know, like, Spaniard and whatever. He has Rosa Mendez with him and, like... It was a pretty good, cool entrance and whatever, like I think like this gimmick is gonna work for him. I think he's finally get that push he really needs. But anyway, yeah, on to the match, right? The match itself was solid. It was like a real good match and whatever. I felt bad for these guys though because like it was like in the beginning of the show and basically the building was pretty much empty and was nobody watching and like like I said it was a pretty like good match and whatever. Fandango took this one, you know, he took this win. And yeah, I think they're gonna like push him eventually. Let's have the return of Bad and Barry. You know, all he did was look cool. I'm gonna get pop back to come to you know, I got some bad news for Team Cena, I got some bad news for Team Authority. It was a pretty good promo, you know what I mean, I can't complain or whatever. You know, I wish he would have had a match, but, you know, it was, it was still really good. So I hope to see him in the ring real soon. Now we have an unannounced match, which was Cesaro coming out, and basically he's rooting for Team Authority and whatever. Then you have Jack Swagger come out, and he's rooting for Team Cena along with Zeb Coulter. This match was alright, you know, nothing special, Jack Swagger won this one. What bothers me about this match is that Jack Swagger was originally announced to be part of Team Cena and supposedly he got injured and couldn't be at the pay-per-view but all of a sudden he has a match at the pay-per-view like that really kind of bothered me. So yeah, we have that and now on to the real show. The first match we have the four way tag team titles. We have Golden Stardust versus the Metadors versus the Usos versus the Miz and Damon Mizdow. So pretty decent match. All night the fans were cheering for Mizdow and whatever. So you know, I think he's finally over. He's finally gonna get some sort of push and whatever. But anyway, at the end, his team won. Like he actually the one that got the pinfall and whatever. You know, a little bit of controversy there between him and Miz. It's gonna start some dissension between them. But yeah, we have new tag team champions, which is The Miz and Damon Mizdow. Now we have Max Adam Rose and Slater Gator, you know, keep Slater and Titus O'Neil. Basically, this is going to start a match for later on that night. So yeah, we have the match, and the bunny starts off the match. Adam Rose being jealous, he tags in really quickly before Bunny could do anything, and basically gets beat up for it. Slater Gator takes advantage, and this goes on for like a few minutes. Adam Rose finally gets the hot tag to the bunny. And yeah, the bunny basically wins this match. He wins with a top rope drop kick, where Adam Rose, he's reaching out for the tag and he's just looking in, in disbelief like, oh my god, you won. Like he's li like in that trance for like a few seconds and whatever. So then the bunny, he goes out to like the entourage and whatever, does the leap of faith that um, Adam Rose always does. And basically, the party takes him away with Adam Rose in the ring like, wow like in this uh, disbelief. Again, pretty good match in my opinion. So yeah, we got that. Now we have the Survivor Series traditional tag team elimination match with the Divas and whatever, which was Paige, Cameron, Summer Rae, and Layla versus Natalia, Naomi, Emma, and Alicia Fox. Pretty awesome match for a Divas match, so, which basically ended like I said, like the good guys won, the faces and whatever. And none of them were eliminated. They basically eliminated the whole heel team without one loss. So yeah, we have that. So next match we have is the match that I thought was going to steal the show, which is Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt. Really great match, an excellent match, you know, and it ended pretty much the way I said it was going to end, where Bray Wyatt goes outside, gets two cheers, not one, but two cheers, one to distract the referee and the other one to attack Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose reverses it gets the chair and basically attacks um, Bray Wyatt with the chair causing disqualification so Bray Wyatt won this match like I said was gonna happen so a few minutes later Dean like goes under the ring and takes out a table and puts Bray Wyatt through that table then he takes out a ladder and basically just stands on top of the ladder for a few minutes you know to taunt Bray Wyatt basically this is setting up the match between them and TLC which is the next pay-per-view which later on in night was actually announced during the pay-per-view Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that ever happened during a pay-per-view. You know, tell me down below in the comments. But I don't think that ever happened. So yeah, this match was really great, in my opinion. We have a segment where on satellite, we have Roman Reigns, which basically says he's coming back next month. Nothing really special here, except for the fact that he's coming back next month. Next match we have for the Diva title is AGD 
offers to Nikki Bella with Brie Bella in her corner. Which if you remember, Brie Bella is being forced to be in her corner due to the fact that she lost a match against Nikki where if either Bella lost, they would have to be the other one's personal assistant for 30 days. This match was short, but in my opinion, it was awesome. If you like controversy and drama in a match, like, this match was good. So it starts off, both Divas are in the ring. All of a sudden, Brie grabs the Diva title, gets in the apron, just stand there. AJ looks at her like, what are you doing? What's going on? Brie grabs AJ, kisses her, dead square in the mouth in front of everybody. Nikki grabs AJ, puts her in the rack attack. One, two, three, new champion. Brie smiles, going to the ring, raises her sister's hand. And yeah, Michael Cole brought up a good point about this, why Brie would possibly do this. Because in WrestleMania 27, her husband, Daniel Bryan, which was the world champion at the time, was basically dating AJ during storyline, had a match against Sheamus at WrestleMania 27. AJ kisses Daniel Bryan, he turns around and gets hit by the bro kick. And now Daniel Bryan has the record for the like, shortest title reign, which is 18 seconds, all because of AJ's kiss of death, as they called it. So yeah, that was the reasoning be behind Brie's heel turn and joining forces with her sister. Like I said, short match, but controversial, but at the same time, really decent. Now, finally, we have the main event, which is Team Authority, versus Team Cena, which of course Team Cena is led by John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, Big Show, Ryback, and formerly of the Wyatt family, Eric Rowan. And then on Team Authority's side, we have Seth Rollins, Kane, Mark Henry, Rusev, and another former Wyatt family member, Luke Harper. First one eliminated in a matter of seconds with a KO punch by Big Show is Mark Henry. So now it's four versus five. Next one eliminated with a curve stop and a super kick by Rusev. Evening up the score is Ryback, so now it's 4-4. Four, four. The next one eliminated is Rusev. He basically eliminated himself by putting himself through a table and getting counted out and whatever. So now it's 4-3. to three. Next one eliminated with a clothesline from his former tag team partner, Luke Harper, is Eric Rowan. So now we're down to 3 versus 3. Now here's where the fun starts. Ziggler's beat up outside the ring. John Cena is beat up in the ring trying to stand up. Big Show walks in the ring. And on the other side, you have Seth Rollins, Kane, and Luke Harper. Cena finally gets up and all of a sudden, POW! Big Show hits him right in the face, basically betraying his team and joining the authority. Seth Rollins pins John Cena, 1-2-3, John Cena's eliminated. Big Show goes over and shakes Triple H's hand, and Big Show walks off, basically eliminating himself leaving it 1 to versus 3. So it's basically Dolph Ziggler all by himself versus the three members of Team Authority. But don't count out Dolph Ziggler yet because he hits the zigzag on Kane, the living Kane, so now it's 2-1. Two, two, Dolph Ziggler rolls up Luke Harper for the 1-2-3, basically eliminating him, and now we have it even. It's one-on-one, -on -one, Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler, winner take all. Now Seth Rollins is pissed. He's basically beating down Dolph outside the ring. Basically more or less brutalized him. So at one point, Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble interfere and whatever, distracting Dolph Ziggler. And basically all hell breaks loose. Dolph hits the zigzag. One, two, Triple H pulls the referee outside the ring and knocks him out. Stephanie McMahon gets on the apron, gets knocked off the apron into Super H, basically knocking them both out for a few seconds. Dolph Ziggler hits another zigzag, pins him, but there's no referee. Another referee comes from the back. One, two, Triple H interferes and beats up the referee and throws the referee outside the ring. He's pissed off right now. He takes off his jacket and beats up Dolph Ziggler, basically. Even hitting the pedigree on Dolph. So he takes Seth, puts him on top of Dolph for the pin. Mind you, there's still no referee. He's calling for a referee to come to the ring. And then the referee that does show up is the referee that's basically in his pocket, Scott Armstrong. All of a sudden, we hear some music we never heard before with some crow sounds. Triple H looks at the Titantron and like, what's going on? And finally, in the WWE arena, we have Sting. Sting walks to the ring and Scott Armstrong basically tries to stop him. Sting knocks him out. Sting goes in the ring, has a stare down with Triple H for a few minutes. Then the fans start to chant, this is awesome, which it really was too. Triple H has some words for Sting. Triple H throws a punch at Sting, gets kicked in the stomach, and then gets hit by the Scorpion Death Drop. Sting then takes Seth Rollins, throws him over and puts Dolph Ziggler on top of him for the pin. Triple H and Stephanie are knocked out right now. Referee gets back in the ring. One, two, three. Dolph Ziggler won it all by himself with a little help from Sting. And now the authority are out of power. They no longer have power. Dolph Ziggler could barely walk. You know, he celebrates with the fans. He's like ecstatic and whatever. 
going to the back. John Cena comes back and basically gives him a hug. This to me basically was signs of John Cena passing the torch. So to me Dolph Ziggler is going to be the future. Like he's going to be the guy in a matter of months like here in the WWE. Stephanie woke up. She's like in disbelief and whatever. And then like she starts having a temper tantrum. While Triple H gets up and like he doesn't know what happened. He's dazed. And that's basically how the show ended. Yeah y'all comment down below like if y'all like the Survivor Series. 2014 what were your favorite matches what were your favorite moments if you even watched the pay-per-view like this video give it a thumbs up share with your friends if you're not subscribed already please subscribe and until next time y'all peace